So. Hope many students get to join, but we will not wait for them. We will start because uh, it is already 9.30. Good morning to all of you. So in the last class, we have uh, tried to understand about the biogeographical regions. These are the largest bodies of mainly the land which are characterized by a definite climatic pattern. Not only that, they are also characterized by the groups of animals and plants which are originated that basically and these animals and plants must have gone to other groups. So this large geographical area we call it as biogeographical regions. So basically the Wallace and Slater have classified or divided this earth into six biogeographical regions that is Palearctic, Ethiopia, Oriental, Australian, uh, Neotropical, Nearctic and Neotropical. So in the last class we have tried to understand about two biogeographical regions. One is the Palearctic and the second one is uh, African or which was earlier known as Ethiopia. So today we will move to the next two biogeographical regions, two or three. Let me, for the day, let me start with the Nearctic Cream. This is the one of the largest biogeographical ream because it includes North American continent up to the middle of Mexico. Entire North America continent up to the tip, up, uh, up to the middle of the Mexico. Naturally, the climate here is a temperate, very cool climate with Arctic edges. In the northern part, you can get the Arctic region, Arctic edges. And here, the grasslands, there are many grasslands in the middle of the continent also, in the Nearctic region. Grasslands are there. But if you come to the western part, it is more arid with lot of mountains and coniferous forest. I hope many of you are the students of botany so you understand what exactly meant by what type of forest it is. Mostly the coniferous forest because in the western part it is much varied and it has lot of mountains. Now talking about the fauna in this region especially you stuck with the mammals. There are 24 families of land mammals. In the land area there are more than 24 families. In the, out of these 24 families, there are many endemic mammals. I hope in the last class only I must have told you what is endemic. Endemic refers to the animals which are the restricted range. Mainly these mammals, endemic mammals includes many of the rodents, uh, relatives of our rats, mice, bandicoots, not bandicoots, rats, mice and uh, um, other uh, rodents. Then especially the pocket mice, pocket gob, gophers, then mountain beavers. Even endemic mammal includes Pong horns and Sevelin. Especially Pong horns and Sevelin are the endemic archaeoductile mammals. That is very close to our uh, horse and all. Archaeoductile mammals. Then, here, though it's a Nearctic cream, it has some contribution from the Palearctic cream house. As a result, 
many of the periodic elements in the sense these are the elements which evolved originated and evolved in periodic region later migrated to this nearctic region so this periodic elements mainly include beavers moles pikas jumping mice these are some of the example these are basically periodic but they are also found in nearctic that means these are the groups beavers moles pikas and jumping mice they are shared between their original homeland that is the uh, palearctic and even the nearctic so here the neotropical species there are many new many species of this nearctic region they have also crossed over to north america like marsupials such as opossum pouched mammals didelphis then shrew opossum then others include nine banded armadillo and even the tree porcupine in the sense they are also neotropical species even there are some mammals with wide range of distribution not only in one or two geographical regions they are found in more number of geographical regions they are also found here like shrews rabbits squirrels mice cats bats beavers deer and bovids uh, these i should say that they are more distributed in many of the by geographical regions if you take birds there are 49 families of birds in this region out of 49 39 are wide distribution they have their presence in other uh, uh, by geographical regions also but 10 are mostly endemic to them there are some exclusive birds that means endemic to this by geographical region ream the exclusive birds i can say that they are especially the red cardinals humming birds tanagers and even the wild turkey they are also belong to this uh, exclusive to this nearctic ream in some seasons you can see the golden plover also here but golden plover is not the resident bird of this neotropical region instead uh, golden plover generally migrates from europe when the winter starts in europe the golden plover flies to this neotropical region then uh, talking about the reptiles uh, that is the turtles snakes lizards it has lot of turtles and non poisonous snakes like uh, garter snakes non poisonous garter snake rattle snakes are there rattle snake snakes are poisonous especially the rattle viper is a most poisonous one then they have geckos and horned lizards on the head region you can see a horn like structure for a lizard so that's why it is known as horned lizard and even limbless lizards even there are horned toads actually toads comes under amphibians not comes under the reptiles and alligators alligator mississippians especially first located in the mississippi river so that's why it is known as mississippians then even the gila monster they are exclusive to this region especially mississippi uh, alligator mississippians and gila monster they are the major uh, in addition to uh, 
the geckos, horned lizard, limbless lizard, these are the major endemic organ reptiles of this area. If you take any biogeographical thing, amphibians mainly show the highest degree of endemic compared to any other organ in any of the biogeographical groups. And they are in this neotropical region. Lot of salamanders, then hellbenders, neotonic larva called exolotal larva, which all of you know. The larva never metamorphosed into an adult, but instead of that larva itself matures and starts production, exolotal larva. Even eel-like serines, Congo eel, what we call uh, is in common uh, language, the empyuma, tiger salamander, embistoma, tigrinum. These are the euro reels, they are the legged MPB, uh, sorry, tailed MPB. Even the newts are really remarkable in this meiotic region. Smooth newt, great crested newt, banded newt, alpine newt, bosca newt, like that. There are different types of newts. Even there are dusky salamander, red back salamander, and Jordan salamanders are also seen in this region. Anuras, especially the toads and frogs. American Belto, Lyapelma, North American Bullfrog, Leopard Frog, especially this found in the central region where there are uh, grasslands. Even some uh, amphibians inhabit the mountains, for example, uh, Rana, Cascade, and Buffo. Boreas. The desert spare food too. There's also one more desert spare food too. It is more adapted to arid climate of northwestern America, arid climate of northwestern America. Along with that, there are other toads like oak toads. Southwestern toad, Jane toad, which is about 20 centimeters long, so that's why uh, popularly called as uh, Jane toads. Most of these amphibians show highest degree of endemism to these neotic reefs. Then the fishes. Fishes in the neotic reef is dominated by carps and perches. Uh, Holosti fishes are the endemics because uh, as of now there are only two species, surviving species, genoid fishes because the you can see the genoid scales here. And there is also one species of bowfin found in American lakes. And there are the, uh, remaining eight species of fishes which are garp, garp pike found in Amer rivers. So I am talking about the freshwater fishes. The, these fishes generally possess sharp teeth. This sharp teeth uh, is to catch the prey and gulp the prey with extraordinary swiftness. Even one particular very fish, fish whose name is to be recorded, the paddle fish, Poliodon. It's a chondrosti fish. 
but found only in the Mississippi River of America. Why these paddlefishes are important is, one paddlefish is seen in the Mississippi River of America and another species of paddlefish occurs in China. Even if you look into the fishes, the fishes have pad legs now. On which you can see the sensory organs which is meant to locate the prey. How? They can sense the electrical fields and thereby they can locate the prey or sense. Then emerald catfishes. and moon eyes. And one family of fishes, there is a bass family with genera moroni and Pupilema. They are all endemic to this neotropical region. So thus I can say that the fauna of neotic region is very rich in reptiles and it's a complex of tropical and temperate climate because you can though it is mainly having a temperate or cooler climate there are many tropical elements are also found in this Nearctic So then, I don't know whether we have discussed about this African or Ethiopian thing. One minute, one minute, let me check. Let me check one minute. Your tropical rain. Then, uh, yeah, after this, amphibians, we can move on to the next biogeographical ring, that is African or Ethiopian ring. This African or Ethiopian ring, actually it was earlier known as African ring, but now, oh sorry, Ethiopian ring earlier, uh, but later Ethiopia refers to one country that's why it has, now it has been extended to whole Africa. That's why more popularly known as African region. This region includes the entire continent of Africa south of Sahara Desert. This is mainly the trop tropical region, hot climate you know, what you call in Kannada Ushnavalaya. It is as having evergreen forests and grassland in the center. Grasslands are found in the central region as well as in the eastern parts. You can see that. There is a desert in the north, what you call Kalahari Desert, in the north of this region. Coming to the study of the fauna of this region, let's start with the mammals. These mammals, there are 38 families of mammals you can see here. Out of which, 12 are exclusively and rest are shared with neotropical and oriental. That means out of 38, 12 are exclusive, that means endemic, almost 35, 34-35%, almost we can say that, sorry, 33%, almost one third of the mammalian population that has been observed in this uh, African region, they are 
and me and remaining uh, 26 families are found in neotropical also in oriental region also even this uh, has the examples for many animals which are having worldwide distribution animals that are having worldwide distribution which include shrews, rabbits, squirrels, mice, dog, myriad mice, cats, bovids, and antelopes. These are mainly all of them here. They are all more generalized species, which have worldwide distribution. Shrews everywhere, rabbit, squirrels, cats, bovids, antelopes. They are found now everywhere. But out of 38, 12 are endemic or exclusive to this African ring. The exclusive animal includes mainly the giraffe, hippopotamus, aardvark, even rock hyrax, golden moon, elephant shoes. Even the water, there is a chavarotain, water chavarotain, what you call, which is a small deer like. Another example is IAIA, bush babies, and lemurs, which are mainly found in Madagascar. Undoubtedly, there are six endemic families of rodents and three of which are insectivorous rodents. Then talking about the mammals in the fauna, there are no camel, there are no camels here, but bears and tigers are seen bears and tigers it shares lot of animal with the oriental rim oriental rim which we have not discussed for example the lorries lorries monkeys apes pangolin cheetah elf, cheetah elephants rhinoceros Actually, all of them are the major fauna of the oriental region also. But same are found in the African region. Mainly the larger one. When I say larger one are lorises monkey, apes, pangolin, elephants and rhinoceros. Even Jerboa, wild horses are also found here. Then about the apes. The bird fauna is very, very interesting here. Especially the birds of this of rain has lot of affinity with the birds which are found in the oriental region. Oriental region where you know, even our, uh, India is also coming. Then uh, there are cuckoos, woodpeckers, hornbills, sunbirds, herons, orioles, very beautiful birds like birds of prey, storks, parrots, pigeons, fowls, guinea fowls, hornbill, swallows and bee eater. 
see why i am reading this list is the first sentence i have told you the bird fauna has lot of affinities with the oriental region where india is also a part of the oriental region so that's why i say that see these are all the birds the coos woodpeckers hornbills sunbirds herons parrots pigeon fowl these are also found in oriental region so the bird fauna is mostly shared between this african and oriental region but in addition to this uh, generals there are six exclusive families which we may call it as endemic that includes ostriches secretary bird hammerhead bird which mainly feeds on frog and fish then crested toracos ground hornbills mouse birds hamlet shrike even the honey guide which feeds on honey bee larva and uh, this honey guide why it is called so is actually in the african region the tribes they follow this honey guide bird because that visit the bee hive to eat the larva so if they want to locate the honey bee hive better to follow this honey guide bird then there are two species of ox peckers two species of ox peckers namely yellow bird yellow bill and red bill this ox peckers and yellow bellied and red bellied are very important because they form a symbiotic relationship with the rhinoceros rhinoceros these two birds mainly feed on ticks and other ectoparasites which live on the body of rhinoceros even a very interesting bird which all of you must have heard that is the crocodile bird very very interesting bird probably nobody dares to enter inside the mouth of a crocodile but this tiny bird fearlessly enter the mouth of the crocodile usually crocodiles will come out of water and start basking in the hot sun uh, usually on the shore or if at all in islands then uh, they will open their mouth this crocodile bird enters inside the mouth of the crocodile where the crocodile do not eat do it enters the mouth then feeds on the leeches and other organisms which are found in the mouth of the crocodile in the mouth of the crocodile mostly the leeches will be there when they open the leeches enter and start sucking the blood this bird uh, feed on this uh, leeches so that's why it's also a symbiotic relationship uh, where the crocodile bird get the food whereas the crocodiles can get rid of the leeches then the reptiles among the reptiles crocodiles and turtles and few lizards are very important here uh, that belong into family lizardidae and agamidae agamidae spiny lizards of family cordylidae they are found only to this african reef even uh, the chameleons which are common but they are 
not exclusive, they are even found in the tropical region. The snakes, if you look into the snakes, it includes python, tiplops and biting vipers, different types of vipers. Even saw-scaled vipers are also there. The crocodiles, if you include, there are three important one is there is the crocodilus noloticus. Then osteolamus, which is found in the Africa. Osteoblepharon is another species of the crocodile which now has taken shelter in Congo. Then uh, amphibians, no eurodils, tailed amphibians are not there. But frogs and toes are abundant. Frogs and toes. Uh, more prominent one is African ridged frog and African shovel nose frog. The flying frog is the African frog that is belong to genus Rana. Buffos are totally absent here. Even there is one frog that is known as Phrynomeric tree frogs. They are endemic and 0% aquatic cloud tours are also found. 0 first is found in the oriental region also. And there are many aquatic cloud tours are prevalent. They remain in water. Xenopus and aquatic clawed toes, which are unique to this region, but whereas the Sicilians, the limbless amphibians, where salamanders, ichthyopes are grouped, they are present here. Lastly, about the fishes. The lung fishes are very prominent and very interesting creature of this reef. They have two species of protectors, especially living in the rivers and lakes, like the tropical fishes. And there are ten species of bichir, it is a polypterus generally called as bichir. The electric eel which uh, all of you fascinate by hearing. Electric eel is one among the six family members of Mormiridae. Hmm? And it's a, it is having an electric organ in tail, which can generate electricity and used for killing and trapping the prey. There are enough amount of catfishes, carps, kerosins, and generally, if you want to uh, generalize. The fish fauna is highly diverse. 
irrespective of type of the fauna, from mammals to fishes to beauty, they show remarkable similarity with the oriental region. Probably when I read the name of many of these uh, mammals, birds, uh, reptiles, you must be thinking that they are found even in our region also. So that's why I told you the fauna shows remarkable similarity or overlapping of the living beings with the oriental region. Then comes the amphibia. No urodids, no tailed amphibian. Dominating are the frogs and toes, which are usually found in the African edges. Flying frog is African Reco Forin, genera belong to genera Rana. This generic Rana and Buffo, they have become extinct. Even the many of the tree frogs they are abundant. Even the Xenopus genera, which are characterized by having aquatic class, this Xenopus and aquatic clothes, they are again endemic to this region. Whereas, as I have already told you, the limbless amphibians are totally absent. Now, neotropical reef. This neotropical reef is one of the largest spatial region of Earth's land surface. Among the rims that we have studied, the neotropical rim is the largest one. So here, uh, especially very rich in biodiversity, the neotropical rim is about 19 million square kilometer area which is mainly includes tropical and subtropical moist broadleaf forest. As far as the moist broadleaf forest is concerned, this stream has the maximum of such forests. A part of Amazon rainforest, though it comes in the Africa, a part of Amazon rainforest is also included in the neotropic reef and is a just part of Amazonia bioregion of neotropic, small part. This neotropic region is popularly known as South American region. It extends from south, south, from Mexico desert into South America as far as the subantarctic zone. It extends south from the Mexican desert into South America as far as the subantarctic zones. Here, if you look into the fauna, mammals, there are two, 32 families of mammals. Out of these 32 families, 50% is very unique. There are certain mammals which are widely distributed. 
like shrews, rabbits, squirrels, mice, dogs, beavers, cats and deers, which you have in, Afro, in African dream, which you have in Oriental dream, and even in Neotropical dream also you have. The very interesting mammal of this region is the camels. There are two species of camels. Even lot of monkeys, which include spider monkeys, squirrel monkeys, howlers, capuchins, marmosets, belong to two families. They are very common in this reason. Even very rich in avifauna or birds, not only rich, 50% of the bird fauna is endemic. And very unique to South America. So that's why this neotropical rheum is also known as bird continent. 50% of the birds that you see here are endemic. Out of 67 families of the birds, 25 are endemic to the region. There are partridges like tinamos or Taucans. Like Tinamos and Taucans, these partridges carry enormous beaks and trumpeters can make very high intensity sound. Hot gin, then cock of the rock, oil birds. Even there are several species of micas, such as yellow micas, hands micas. So such things are very common. Endemic, red-bellied macaw, red and blue macaw. These are most of the prominent endemic birds of this region. From the order gully formis, only quails are seen here. The hummingbirds, bee hummingbirds, uh, found in a Cuba, measures so small that is only six inch, and that is the smallest bird that we have. Bee hummingbird. Which has been identified in Cuba. Cuba also comes under this. Then reptiles. There are plenty of snakes. Iguanid lizards. Crocodiles, alligators, turtles are very common here, are the common reptiles of this biogeographical ring. Xanthocid lizard is a endemic lizard that also found in a very small place here, endemic lizard. Then there are snakes like tree boas, anaconda which you might have heard, seen the picture also, anacondas, pit vipers and coral snakes are common. Mud turtles, this uh, group is shared with the African counterpart. Mud turtles are found in African rim as well as in the neotropical. 
even we have snake like neck turtles and one more group there is a chilodina this uh, snake neck turtle and chilodina they are also born in australian rim so these are shared between neotropical as well as the australia amphibians there is the tree frog such as brazilian tree frog hyla which is also found in oriental rim hylodes cuban tree frog venezuelan uh, venezuelan tree frog this venezuelan tree frog is very unique because it detects the predator by producing foul odor so nobody goes near it and there are some poisonous amphibians like philomedusa that is found in part of the amazon forest then the yellow frog is the largest and most toxic frog it produces the toxin and actually the colombian tribes use this poison by applying that poison to the tip of the arrow that you that they use another frog is dart poison frog is also highly poisonous then the suriman toad the tongue and toothless suriman toad no for its parental care even there are tiny frogs chilean frog which carry the eggs in the gular pouches so the frog carries the eggs like the brazilian tree frog even sicilians sicilians that is the ethiopian and salamander tiflonectus is the only tailed amphibian only single only one tailed amphibians you can see in the south america so only one species in sicilians are reported then lastly about the fishes here the carp and other fish fauna no carp and other fish fauna is endemic endemic fishes are very very rare though they have electric eel cat fishes even the charasin fish these are the very very interesting fishes and very rare fishes even the lung fish which is known as lepidosiren paradoxa that is found in the amazon park the fauna of neotropical region is very rich in endemic family almost 40 families out of 155 family of vertebrates and other fauna 40 families are endemic so this is also having highest degree of endemicity as i have told you the neotropical region contains south america middle america undoubtedly it is the most species region of the world most species species reason 
in terms of freshwater fishes. In freshwater fishes, 32 families and more than 4,500 species are found here. Even the most colorful Karachi forms, 1,500 species. Pirana, which is a, again a very dangerous freshwater fish, and Charasins, are also unique to this region. Five families, the 14 families and 2,500 species of catfishes, five families and 134 species of gymnotiforms then South American electrical knife fishes in addition to that there will be 150 species of sicilis several secondary freshwater and marine derivative groups are also included here Generally they are marine, but many of them are found in fresh water. For example, stingrays, herrings, silver sides, needlefishes, killifishes, crockers. Till today, many specimens remain undiscovered and described, particularly in South America, and uh, very big reem and lot of scope for research. Neotropical region is further divided into eight subdivisions. Even uh, major river systems are here. Major lakes are also there. The world's highest fish containing lake, that is the Lake Titicaca, is also found here. Uh, so, I think uh, for the day we will uh, stop here and we will continue in the next class. One thing I have seen that there are many students not attending. If it is continues even on Monday, their names will be reported. And another thing, even uh, after 30 minutes of the starting the class also students continue to join. So next Monday onwards, if you do not join by 9.30, mean 9.35, I will not admit and that will be viewed very seriously.